Everyone fears time, but time fears the pyramids. Building the pyramids of the Nile Valley almost 5,000 years ago was the most ambitious and spectacular undertaking ever achieved by mankind. The pharaohs of Egypt were so powerful that they sought eternal life, and the pyramids, their colossal tombs, would bring them closer to this wish. Come with us now as we explore the pyramids designed for eternity. The pyramids we're most familiar with seeing are the magnificent structures at Giza. But the story of the pyramids originates not in Giza, but 12 miles farther south, in an area known as Saqqara. Today, a silent span of desert separates Saqqara from Giza. But this was once an immense necropolis, the burial place for the inhabitants of Memphis, capital of the ancient kingdom. This is the Step Pyramid, the oldest stone monument in the world. It was built by the Pharaoh Djoser around 2600 BC and designed by Imhotep, the first architect whose name would live on in history. Imhotep's design work was so revolutionary and successful at that time that he was later deified one of the few non-royals to achieve that distinction. Votive statues in his honor are at the Cairo Museum. For the Saqqara Pyramid, Imhotep chose to layer six mastabas, low rectangular stone structures normally erected over tombs, one on top of the other to reach an overall height of almost 200 feet. Pharaoh Djoser had a stone portrait of himself placed in the Serdab, a sealed chamber in the pyramid. And he had two holes made in the wall so that he could observe the outside world for all eternity. His is the first life-size stone portrait in the history of mankind. The original is also in the Cairo Museum. Unfortunately, his face was mutilated and irreparably damaged during the robbery of gemstones which were set in the orbit of his eyes. The Saqqara Pyramid is surrounded by several beautifully built constructions that emulate in stone the sheaves of rushes and matting used for ceilings in the houses of nearby Memphis. The ancient city is now completely buried over. Only some palm trees, sand, and a small farming community exist where the great city once stood. At Saqqara, a huge wall surrounded the sacred area of the pharaoh's tomb. The wall was over half a mile long and almost 50 feet high. The 14 stone doors that can be seen along the wall were all false, except for one, the real point of access, which faced south. To get to the sacred area, worshippers had to walk down a long avenue lined with 40 sculpted columns, which would have originally been painted. Their shape recalls the sheaves of straw and reeds used to protect brick columns. This passage gave access to the interior of the complex, to the courtyards, chapels, and sanctuaries. Even though they were modeled to give the impression of real buildings, they are mainly imitations set with false doors.
At the end of the avenue is the large interior courtyard with the pyramid rising up in the center. The first noble stone construction created for one man. A man who was concerned the world would forget him. A man who ensured it would not. Besides the monuments of pharaohs and princesses, there were many high officials who wanted to build their own tomb in Saqqara, like the tomb of Ti. The Mastaba of Ti, where his wife and son were also buried, is one of the largest and most richly endowed tombs in the Saqqara necropolis. It is possible to gain access to Ti's burial chamber from the courtyard by means of a long, sloping passageway that leads to an underground crypt where T's sarcophagus is preserved in a starkly decorated chamber. The extreme simplicity of this room is in stark contrast to the rich decorations found in the rest of the mastaba. The upper chambers in the tomb are decorated with a series of figures portraying scenes from the daily lives of the dead man and his family. T was an important state official inspector of the pyramids of Abu Sir, as well as being the official court hairdresser. And here, emerging from the past, is the statue of Ti, seen as it was at the time of the pharaohs almost 5,000 years ago. More than 80 pyramids have been rediscovered in Egypt, all of them built on the western bank of the Nile, the side where the sun goes down. South of Saqqara, near the oasis of Fayum, archaeologists discovered a pyramid of historical importance because of its unique features. The pyramid at Meidum, built for the pharaoh Snefru, founder of the fourth dynasty. Why is this pyramid different from all the others? The monument was originally a step pyramid, like the one in Saqqara. But here in Medu, the architects working for the pharaoh Snefru believed they had found the secret of the perfect form. They would abandon the previous step structure, fill in the platforms, and make the line of the pyramid smooth and sloping. It was a revolutionary concept. But something went wrong. The bases of the four external supporting walls fell in and the blocks of limestone slipped downward, revealing the internal part that we see today. Like the pyramid in Saqqara, the Medum pyramid was also surrounded by tombs of princes and dignitaries. The statues of Prince Rahotep and his wife on display at the Cairo Museum were found here. When archaeologists discovered the statues of Rahotep and Nofret, the workers taking part in the dig were terrified by their intense expression, which they believed was too lifelike to be that of mere statues. Pharaoh Snefru had another pyramid built, the Pyramid of Dashur, universally known as the Bent Pyramid. Dashur is the modern name of this area south of Saqqara. Another monumental construction it was worked on by thousands of builders and dozens of architects. While a step pyramid may have provided a stair by which the king ascended to heaven after his death, the true pyramids probably reflect a change to a solar cult, symbolizing the sun's rays radiating down. This construction was the first one to be designed from the very beginning as a true pyramid with smooth sloping sides. However, when the pyramid had reached about half of its planned height, the angle of the external walls was abruptly reduced, thus creating its characteristic bent profile. The reasons behind this surprising decision have intrigued scholars for centuries. The hypothesis seems to be that the architects preferred to reduce the angle in order to avoid overloading the structure by excessively sloping the sides of the pyramid. This pyramid is one of the most important in ancient Egypt, as well as being the only one that has preserved its original limestone casing. 
The lessons learned by Snefru's architects were absorbed by the architects working for his son, Pharaoh Cheops, who built the pyramid that was to become one of the seven wonders of the world. And it is north on the Nile that we find the area where perhaps the most exciting chapter in the story of the pyramids took place. On the outskirts of Cairo, the modern day capital of Egypt, is a small village called Giza. Giza grew up in a haphazard fashion in the recent Egyptian population explosion. In Egypt, a new baby is born every 20 seconds. Cairo now has a population of over 15 million inhabitants. And yet, Giza is a suburb unlike any other, because wherever you look, you see the imposing bulk of a pyramid. On this plateau, set on the edge of the desert, the story of the pyramids achieved its finest hour. It is here that we best appreciate the grandeur and majesty of these constructions, and the organizational skills and methods used to erect them. The workers here were organized into teams that hauled blocks of stone on huge sleds mounted on logs of wood. Each team was made up of about 1,000 men, organized along military lines and led by a master mason and various underlings. They were not slaves. They earned a regular wage, bed and board. It is thanks to their work that these immense structures were ever completed. Even today, such imposing buildings would involve complex engineering problems. The Great Pyramid of Cheops, which was the first one to be built in Giza about 2500 BC, has a base that covers over 12 acres, and each side is longer than two football fields. But here's what's amazing. The base is leveled off so perfectly that there is never more than an inch of error. How did they do this? This level of precision was achieved with simple measuring rods and lines of cords and by observing the sun and the stars. They might also have employed the use of spirit levels for the horizontal lines. More than 2,300,000 blocks of stone were needed to build the base. They weigh between 2 tons and 200 tons each. It may sound incredible, but this was once a lush green land with neither desert nor buildings here. The irrigation canals linked the area to the Nile and some of the stones used in building were transported on these canals. A boat made with cedar wood built almost 5,000 years ago was discovered here in 1954 near the pyramid of Cheops, still in a perfect state of preservation. Archaeologists found it belonged to the Pharaoh Cheops himself. 140 feet long, equipped with 12 oars. It was probably used by Cheops when he traveled along the Nile. On those occasions, his subjects could get a glimpse of their Pharaoh and pay homage to him. Originally, the pyramids were covered in a very smooth limestone casing which can be seen at the Pyramid of Khafren only at its tip. It was so smooth that the first century Roman historian Pliny described how local inhabitants used to have fun sliding down the steep sides of the pyramids. According to the historian Herodotus, more than 100,000 men worked for almost 10 years just to build the causeway that ran from the river to the plateau on which the Pyramid of Cheops stands. And yet, such lavish and grandiose undertakings were not always appreciated. The enemies of Pharaoh Cheops spread a rumor that the Pharaoh forced his daughter into prostitution in order to make up the necessary funds. This may or may not be true. What we do know is that Cheops was not very popular with his subjects, which is perhaps why this tiny statue in the Cairo Museum is the only one of this powerful Pharaoh that has survived. The whole complex was later expanded with the construction of two other pyramids, which then, as now, added to its majestic grandeur. Khafren, the son of Cheops, built a pyramid that was slightly lower than his father's, but looks higher because it's built on top of a small plateau. 
Then Mycerinus, the last pharaoh of the fourth dynasty, erected the smallest of the three pyramids, which is 213 feet high. Though they're majestic from the outside, going inside the pyramids is an extraordinary experience. Access to the Pyramid of Cheops is through a rough passageway that was dug out at the side of the pyramid in the 9th century to enable the followers of the Caliph al-Mamun to reach the burial chamber and steal its treasures. In A Thousand and One Nights, there is a description of the magical riches of the pharaohs. Inside the Western Pyramid are granite chambers filled with precious gems, unimaginable quantities of gold coins, and magnificent instruments and arms spread with miraculous ointments to prevent them from rusting until Judgment Day. A steep climb inside the pyramid brings you to the burial chamber of Pharaoh Cheops. Only the king's austere granite sarcophagus remains, empty, damaged, and with the cover missing. Centuries and centuries ago, unknown hands rifled all the contents without the least respect for the Pharaoh's mummified body. In ancient Egypt, Mummifying bodies spread over time from being the exclusive privilege of the pharaoh to a practice followed by large groups of the population. It represented continuity of life after death. For this ancient civilization, the soul and the body were considered to be of equal importance. Thus, one needed to be well prepared for the afterlife. More than half a billion people were born and died during the reign of the pharaohs and most of them were mummified. Each of them received funeral honors that were proportionate to their wealth. In fact, the treatment was available in luxury, mid-range, and economy versions. The mummification procedure took from 20 to 70 days, during which the internal organs were removed and the body was dehydrated. Special terracotta containers were used to conserve the lungs, stomach, liver, and intestines. The brain was thrown away, as the ancient Egyptians believed that it was of no use. Embalming was then carried out to toughen the skin. The corpse was often filled with mud and sawdust to help maintain its shape. Then it was wrapped in layers and layers of linen bandages. Lastly, the mummy was enclosed in a wooden sarcophagus. This is the mummy of the great Ramses II, the warrior pharaoh who erected more statues and buildings than any other Egyptian king. It is on display alongside other pharaohs and princesses in the Cairo Museum. Pyramids and the images of mummies that inhabited them are not the only draw at Giza. This statue of the great Sphinx has inflamed the imaginations of men throughout the ages, a statue of mystery and enigma. The Sphinx is the largest outdoor sculpture in the ancient world. It portrays a sitting lion with a human head, perhaps that of Pharaoh Khafren, and faces the rising sun in the east. Carved out of the bare rock, its dimensions are gigantic, 65 feet high, and 187 feet long. The nose alone measures five feet. The face has been damaged on many occasions. By the arrows fired by the Mameluke artillery, by the desert winds, and even by the cannons of Napoleon's army. Sandstorms have eroded the statue in various areas, and Cairo's severe pollution levels are a serious threat for the Sphinx. It has undergone restoration on several occasions to prevent further deterioration. When it was built, it was resplendent with color. It wore a nemes, the royal headdress with the sacred serpent, and it was painted in very bright colors. The face was red, and the false beard worn by every pharaoh was yellow and blue. Even today, the reasons behind the construction of this enormous statue remain a bit of a mystery. 
According to Greek tradition, those unable to solve the puzzle of the Sphinx were devoured. But others feel the Sphinx was built simply to guard the Great Pyramids of Giza. It seems to have carried out this job well, as the pyramids are the only structures of the seven wonders of the world that are still standing today. After Giza, the pharaohs focused on building temples like the ones in Karnak or Luxor. These structures, however, cannot be compared to the perfect forms of the pyramids, the man-made mountains that confirm the unity of earth and heaven. The great complex at Giza remains one of the supreme architectural and logistical achievements of the human race. The Pharaoh Cheops left us with these words. My pyramid shall be an indestructible monument, such as none has been created in God's time. It shall bear my name, and shall be an eternal cry that will say for all time, Cheops is he who from now on will belong forever to the universe. He has certainly left us a monument to enthrall us for eternity.